a beautiful Friday afternoon. I went to an estate sale this morning. It was a living estate sale. I found that sale on a website and I saw the pictures and there was a few things in the pictures I really, really wanted to get. Um, spoiler alert, I didn't get all of them. I did get one thing that I really, really wanted though. So I'm, I'm happy about that. I uh, can't complain about all of this. Uh, it's $64. <laughs> $64 for all that I've got. And it's, it's, it's a lot of smalls for $64. So it doesn't look like much. Anyway, we'll get on with it. Uh, I didn't take any footage. This was uh, not my usual estate sale company. I've been to maybe one or two of their sales in the past. They wanted you to get a number when you walked up. I was number 34. I don't like the numbers. That's maybe only the second time that I've really been to an estate sale in the last few years that they've asked you to get numbers. They don't go by the numbers. Uh, I was 34. The lady in front of me was 31. I have no idea what 32 and 33 were. So it's just you get to, and I think the reason they were doing that is just because they were trying to monitor how many people they had in the house at one time because it was a small house and there was a lot of collectibles. So they didn't want people bumping into each other. It was like a bum rush to get in. So when I got there and I saw it was number 34, I said, there's no way any of this stuff is gonna be there that I want. Um, didn't stop me though, when I finally got in the door, I made a beeline for the kitchen because the one thing that I really, really wanted, there was a few things I wanted, but one thing I really, really wanted, I never see the estate sales. I own one, but I bought that at an antique store. It was the only one I've ever seen at an antique store here in our area. And I paid between $14 and $15 for it at the antique store. That's the only one I've ever seen in person. I see them on everybody else's channel or in pictures. But today I found one myself at an estate sale. A potato mash. And I think it's been used well in its lifetime. Uh, it's got a little divots or something. I don't know that she would have used this or she just, because she had a lot of collections. Maybe she just collected. Um, but yeah potato masher. It was not marked. I didn't even care. I put it in my bag because I went straight to the kitchen to pick this up. Thankful that it was still there. Now, out of all the things that I saw in the pictures, that was the only thing that was left. Uh, there were butter pats, not iron stone, the little decorative butter pats that were would have probably gone with the china set. Uh, they were gone. There was um, a, t a tomato server in the pictures. <laughs> that was gone. That's one of those, it's a collection that I have accidentally found myself in. I don't even like tomatoes and now I own five tomato servers. I don't know, they're decorative now. I guess, you know, people wouldn't even know what they are if you set it down in front of them. But this one, I are, the one that I wanted wasn't there, but there was one left on the table, so I picked it up. And all of their silver plate was $4 a piece. And that's probably, probably the most I've ever paid for a piece of silver. Now I, I've got, I think the first one or two I got maybe at a thrift store. Not sure if they came from an antique store or not. Um, but I have one like this one. The one that I wanted was more round and it had a really intricate design cut into the, uh, to the bottom of it. Um, if you know what a tomato server is, that's it. It's not really deep as far as it's not, you know, like a pie server, but it's not, a, a, a spoon you would serve peas with either but uh, that one I have one like this this I did see and I did like it it wasn't a must-have but it was still there so I picked it up it's a pie server you see the, the handle and then the uh, the cut of it I really like that part so four dollars a piece for that that was on the table it said anything you know silver plated four dollars a piece this one in the kitchen, I passed it by a couple of times because I already have a bunch of this and I thought I don't need any more. Yet I have it in my hand, so you're asking why. Well, it is a donut cutter. I already have one. I have like three or four of the biscuit cutters like this. And I've already told you I don't make donuts that much. So why did I get it? It was the one that I had has the metal wooden, I mean the uh, metal handle, red metal handle. This one has the wooden red. The reason I got it though, it still has its original price tag of 15 cents. <laughs> I guess she never used it. Never used it, never watched it, I guess. The 15 cent, I think she charged me $2 for that. On the floor, 
Um, they had this several places. They would have boxes of just individual stuff, and they would have a sign on it, anything in the box, a dollar a piece or $2 a piece, whatever. So there was a, a, a box on the floor under a table there in the kitchen, and it did say a dollar a piece for kitchen wares in that box. So I picked this up. A little creamer, I believe. You just tip it either way. It's not marked, and I thought, because it is heavy, I thought, well, maybe it's uh, ironstone. And now I'm kind of leaning towards porcelain. It has very few stainings that I can show you. You can see right there, little dots. Um, that's about as far as staining goes on that, but yeah. Yeah, so anyway, a little creamer was a dollar. Uh, this was by itself, like I said, all the butter pats that I saw in the pictures were gone, but this was sitting by itself. It was marked at a dollar. I'm not a big purple fan. I don't do a lot with purple, but you can see the gold around the edge. It's not marked. About a dollar for that little butter pat. Um, this was in the bedroom. This will probably be for sale. Might be the only thing I have that's going to be for sale. There was a lady. She was just wandering around asking, you know, just out to the general public, where are the bluebirds of happiness? Or the bluebirds. Um, so somebody said in the bedroom. I saw them on the pictures. And I thought by the time I get there, she's going to have everything gone. All the bluebirds are gone. But there was a red bird. What is it? The red bird of love. Blue Birds of Happiness, Red Bird of Love. I don't know what this one is. It's yellow. You, it's all, uh, if you're familiar with Little Blue Birds of Happiness, they are etched on the bottom. This one is etched, but there's no way I can read what that says. It does have its original sticker as well. It says, Handmade at Phoenix Studios, Route, da 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 da, Fayetteville, Arkansas. So you still get a sticker, and you can barely see right in here where it's etched with someone's name the maker's name so i've never seen the yellow ones i don't know what they're called i'll have to look it up i guess see what the yellow ones are um but yeah that will be for sale and you can see how big it is and it's fine it's not chipped its nose is fine its tail is fine it's just small um yeah that will be for sale now this is kind of my regret I don't know if you do the same thing if you go and you're happy with everything and then you have that one piece you're like, what did I buy that for? Well, I saw the bag and I saw one thing in the bag and I thought, well, I want it for that that one thing. It was $6. The one thing that I wanted it for, I thought was on a long chain. It's one of those magnifying glasses that most people would keep on them. But well, it's on this little, it's not on the chain. Um... I am a Miss Marple fan. I love Agatha Christie, Miss Marple. And I think Joan Hickson was probably the best Miss Marple ever. Um, but Geraldine McEwen, Miss Marple, or Joan Hickson did it from the late 80s right up until the early 90s, I think. Uh, and she was an older lady, so I think she died soon after. But then when they remade them in the late 90s, early 2000s, they used a different, two different actresses. But one of them was Geraldine McEwen. And they each kind of got to make their Miss Marple like she was, dress-wise. And she wore a magnifying glass on a long chain around, you know, went it down to her waist. So it was a long chain with a magnifying glass, and that's what I thought this was. So uh, I was kind of shocked when I opened it up, and it wasn't. So anyway, but it does have some cool stuff inside. One of them is this. How would you like to spoon with me? A little bit racy for a Victorian uh, postcard. I don't know if it was Victorian or not. It doesn't have a date stamp. It was mailed because it does have a stamp, but it doesn't have a date stamped from the post office. It was mailed to someone, and I can't make up the last name. But the message is, is I am not sure that you will like this one. But if you don't, please, please tear it up. And it's got a few initials. But there's a card. You want to spoon with me. There's a one cent stamp and then the message on the back. But there's no post office stamp, so. Uh, <clears throat> that is kind of neat. This, I believe, is a bookmark. Um, it's a, a cross. There was a lot of Bibles in that house. There was one room, the room that you initially went in to get in. There was, It was all even, uh, they had shelves built up above the door facings and on the wall full of books. And the company made sure there were um, uh, ladders there if you wanted to get on get on them and look up at those books. I picked up a few, but mm. 
Anyway, this was in there, and I don't know what this is, what this would be. I know it's supposed to be a little bitty hat and a purse, but it's stitched together. So I don't know what that would have been. And then the other thing in there that was kind of cool was this. And this is why I thought it was on a long chain, because this has its own chain. Very nice little, almost a brass chain, I guess. But it's a little pencil. Let me see if I can get the lead to come down. If you can see the lead, it comes down. There's a lead. Um, yeah, pencil. It does write. I have tried it out. But I don't know if that would be something you would attach to you if you're playing bridge. Or if you have a dance card and you want people to write their names on your dance card. I don't know. But all of that was in that bag for $6. And like I said, if that was early in my shopping trip. Had it been later on, I probably wouldn't have gotten it. But, uh, picture frames. Uh, picture frames. I really got to stop myself. Um, this one I really liked. It, 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 it's an old frame. And it says, if I can get it in there. Compliments. I believe it's Levi's Incorporated, Jacksonville, Florida. You can see it written up in here. And you can see the old hairpin kickstand on it. So, you know, it's kind of old. There's an old baby picture, black and white baby picture. And I don't know that this is a reproduction. She had a lot of black and whites so that were real pictures. So that might be a real picture, not just a reproduction. But I do like the, the frame and then the, the kickstand. You know me in old frames. This one is another one of those swivel frames. It's in good condition. Um, cute little guy in front of it, but I really want to either take him out or either put something in front of him, like a postcard or one of my own pictures. But it is one of those swivels. I think there's like two bucks. Maybe the brass one was four. I'm not sure. But that one I know was two. Uh, and of course, if there's picture frames, then there has to be linens, right? My other kryptonite. Uh, these were tied together. I didn't get to look at them in there because they were taped. They had masking tape around them. They are gorgeous to me. I hope I can get some of the stains out. It is the old thick linen, cotton linen. But look at the edge. I just think that's beautiful. And you can see on this side some of the staining that's there. Probably just storage staining. Um, and this one actually has the remnants of the paper tags that were on it. So I'm hoping that will come off. We'll see. But those, I think, were $6. They did have um, quite a bit of old linens in there. <clears throat> but a lot of them were stained. Um, just not in good quality, not in good shape. Uh, but I do like these. Uh, there we go. Ah, now... Outside, there were a couple of tubs. There was a shed, and there were tubs outside, and boxes, and uh, it was just stuff they pulled out of the shed instead of cleaning it. They just put it out there and put a sign, $1 for each, $2 for each, whatever. There was um, two <coughs> red and green, excuse me, tubs, and it said frames, $2 a piece. Now, I didn't see that to begin with. Now, you know me. If I'd have saw it, I'd have stopped, but I didn't see the sign at first. I go in the shed and I come out and there's a lady who has taken the top off of one and she's going through them and she's on her knees, literally on her knees on the ground, going through each one of them. I am not one of those people, I don't want to reach over you, I don't want to reach around you, underneath your arms, I don't want to bump into you, I don't want it done to me so I don't do it to other people. I, I'm just not cutthroat enough, I guess, to just elbow people out of the way and get stuff. So I didn't want to infringe on her moment of sitting there and going through those frames. So I said, you know what, I'll go in the house, do another couple of laps. And then I'll come back out when she's done. So, again, one door in, one door out. I was in the house. I was in the back of the house looking out the back glass like a kid waiting on the ice cream truck. Um, wondering when she's going to be finished. And when she got finished, I went back out. And uh, she had cherry-picked all the good frames. The frames that were left were falling apart. Uh, just trash frames. But there was a lot of pictures in there. Now, my nephew... Um, I think he still wants to decorate with black and white. So I picked a couple of these up with him in mind. This one, <clears throat> and again, I don't want to decorate with black and white pictures of people I don't know, but I like pictures where there's a lot of props. There's a lot of things in the background that you can see that kind of t dates the picture. But you'll see this one. And that this is not flaking off the picture. This is actually paint that's coming off their walls. And it's on that cardboard stuff really really hard cardboard this one and this looks like a reproduction or something it just looks like a picture that i've seen in historical text or something um 
You can see the horse and buggy out front of that house. Nice house. And again, it's on cardboard. This one, <clears throat> Young People's Conference of Montreat, North Carolina, 1921. <coughs> Excuse me. It is so dry. And people are still picking cotton and peanuts right now. And it's just, whew. Anyway, Young People's Conference, Montreat, North Carolina, 1921. And it says Welton, Asheville, North, Asheville, North Carolina on one side of it. There's a lot of people in that one picture. And you can see like their lodge or something up there in the woods. So I'm going to ask him if he's interested in those. This one, again, I don't do a lot of black and white pictures of people, but sometimes you just have to make an exception to that rule. This is not black and white, so there's the exception to that rule. But I've never seen them like this. I'm pretty sure it's an older picture, but it is colorized. And it's in like this little leather folder. One of her smiling, one of her not smiling. But look at that corsage and the dress and how her hair is done. Uh... I don't know about you, but around here, they used to. I don't know if they still do. But on Mother's Day, when you would go to church, you would wear a corsage. And the color depended on if your mother was still alive or if she had passed away. Um, now, I'm not saying that's what this is. It may be she was a chaperone for something, or it was her birthday, or, or, or something. But she had a big old corsage there. But I like that picture. I'm just trying to look at her earrings. Uh, yeah. We always look at another woman's earrings, right? You're always looking at what she's wearing, what she's got on. This is a picture of someone's living room. And it says Southern Exposure of Living Room on the back of the picture. It just gives you an idea of what things look like in the day. And there's no date on it, but you can tell that. That ain't recent. So, yeah. This is a picture, a black and white picture from someone, but I couldn't leave it behind. I do believe he's a serviceman of some kind. I'll have to ask my husband if he knows. You can see the pins here and then a metal or ribbon from a metal there. But it is a postcard. Black and white picture of a, a serviceman. I just couldn't leave it behind. These were wrapped up in this. That's why I got all these. Um, and it's Jenkins Camera Shop, 7, 7 West Forsyth Street, Jacksonville, Florida. Kodak's cameras and photographic apparatus. Kodak developing and printing, picture framing, and enlarging. We are particularly anxious for your business. But that was the outside of it. And then inside, it was a whole bunch of pictures. This one is another soldier. And I believe it's World War I. We're supposed to look like World War I with his little shin guards there. And it is another postcard. Then we have a picture of a baby. And again, on hard hardwood or not hard cardboard or something um and we've got several pictures of babies and then we've got these little girls and these uh pony horse or these little fake horses um i'm guessing sisters same little horse different girls and they are postcards as well um let's see here this was interesting. I think this is a postcard. I thought it was a picture that they colorized, and I thought I've never seen a, a picture colorized that way. But I think it was a postcard that they bought in maybe Germany. And it says, hope this finds you all well. Now, there's no stamp. There's no proof that it was ever mailed anywhere. But it does have a little bit of what I think is German writing on it. So, postcard from Germany. Um, and then these... Again, the stuff in the background is what really attracted me to keeping some of these in here. If I had known what she was going to charge me for it, I'd probably have taken some out. But uh, <clears throat> this one I thought was particularly funny because I think it's the dog driving the car or the sitting in the driver's seat and then a woman and a baby in the back glass of Model T or Model something. Then this lady with her big fine hat, you can see the Model T or whatever that is in the background and it had a soft top on it. And look at the awnings over the windows of the buildings. I love that stuff. So anyway, uh, this came out of the boxes. It said $2 a piece for the frames. So I asked the little guy, so these are not frames. So what's the price for just pictures? And he said, oh, I'll go ask. So he went and asked, and I think she said a dollar a piece. Now, I didn't count these. I didn't know how many was in there. I just saw one or two, and I thought I would just get the whole pack. If I'd have known she was going to charge me a dollar a piece, I would have probably taken some out. Um, but anyway, pictures, old pictures. Um, books, like I said, she they had a whole room that was dedicated to books. I got two books, History of the Sabbath, and it's a dull, dull green. 
I believe it is 1912. Some kind of calculation going on in here. Um, but uh, copyright is 1912. History of the Sabbath. And The Last of the Plainsman by Zane Gray. And this might have, oh no, I don't think it would have had a dust cover. It's just plain. I don't know if it would have had a dust cover or not to be that plain and to be this old. Um, this is, I believe this is 1908. Yeah. No. Well, copyright 1908 by the Outing Publishing Company and then copyright A.C. McClure Company 1911 and then copyright 1936 by Zane Gray. So it probably would have had a dust cover. And then you can see all the discoloration on the pages. Which is neat. So I bought those two books. Those were $2 a piece. And then this uh, she gave me for free because it is a Bible. So they don't charge for Bibles. And there was a lot of Bibles. Some of them were not in very good shape. Some of them were missing their front. But I picked this one up because um, I just think it's neat when you buy an old book and you go through and you find little things in there that they've stuck in. These are a lot of newspaper clippings. Um, just handwritten notes. There's a little Ten Commandments thing. Just got stuck in there. And I know my husband will enjoy going through that as well. Uh, this was in one of the rooms off the back of the house. They had little storage rooms there by the book room. And it didn't have a price. I had a piece of tape on it. And I took it outside and it's got tape, but it's, nobody wrote the price on it. So she wrote $6. Or she told me $6. And I said, okay, I'll take it. It is a tin that looks like a basket. It's got its own handle. It's not horrible inside, but I wouldn't put my white handkerchiefs in it either. Um, sorry for any noise. Uh, it is Loose Wiles Biscuit Company, Bakers of Sunshine Biscuits, address New York, New York, made in the USA. So I thought it'd be good for decorating around spring or Easter maybe. Six dollars for that. And then I believe the last thing that I haven't showed you is this. And that was probably the last thing I picked up. I took it out. Um, took it with me when I walked outside and told them I was going to check out. I believe this is a cake platter. It is bigger than a regular plate. To me, it's bigger than a regular plate. But you can see all that awesome crazing. And then this little filigree work right here. Um, the stamp on the back says something, something USA. I can't read it. But look at that crazy, man. Um, anyway, that was, I believe, $5. And I've got a couple of platters over here. I was thinking about maybe including it with the, the platters on the wall. So, for all of this, $64. Um, I enjoyed uh, looking through, I enjoy looking through old people's houses. They got the coolest stuff. Uh, and if you like what you saw, uh, please subscribe. Uh, leave us a comment. We do read and respond to them. And uh, give us a thumbs up, a like, pass us along, recommend us, whatever you feel like doing. And I hope you're enjoying uh, beautiful weather wherever you are. And that you've had a great week and you're going to have a great weekend ahead of you. So thank you for watching South Georgia Home.